You're watching New Car Spin. I'm your host, Brian, and I am back in 2018. This time I have the Volkswagen Beetle Dune Convertible. Is this a stereotypical car? Meaning, do I have to wear a pink shirt? Do I have to have a soy latte? Do I have to munch carpet flavored kale chips? Um, I wanted to know. So they dropped this car off at my home in Dallas and then I drove it to Houston to go to the Houston Auto Show. And now here I am in Austin. So basically I've driven it all over Texas and I was actually quite shocked because during that drive, I got nothing but compliments. They actually kind of went, that's cool. I like the color, right on. And I've been getting the comments from people at the lobby of hotels when I valet. I've been getting it from bums on the side of the road. I've been getting it from people at work. I actually gave a ride to somebody at work. She was from India and she's never been in a convertible. She thought I was talking about a rickshaw or something. I said, no, 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 you gotta understand this. So uh, even though it may be what they would term a girly car, chicks dig it, guys like the color. It's pretty hardcore with the trim. I've been having a blast in this car. Let me show you some of the really cool things. Obviously it's a convertible, but, ha, hey Harry, where'd you come from, Harry? What's going on, Harry? You'll see obviously the interior is really flash and really spartan at the same time. We have a flat bottom steering wheel. We have our Dune logo here. When you start up the car, it says, welcome to your Beetle. You'll notice the instrument cluster, the gauge surround is the same color as the car. And we also have this color that carries over inside and also with the contrast stitching and the piping. So what they're really trying to do here is compete with what I believe would be the Mini. So if you're a Mini buyer, you're buying a Mini for the looks and the cachet and you just kind of want style. This thing is VW's version of style. And you can't go wrong with something classic like the Beetle. It's been around now for, well, this version has been around for 20 years. They launched it in 1998, and this is the first time I've actually driven one. So I had a blast. You'll see back here, we do have some kind of room. There is a cup holder and there's a 12 volt charger, but not for adults. I think if you have children, they'd have fun back here. Obviously we do have some protection here in case of rollovers. We have roll bars that pop out. Hopefully you'll never use them. And of course the engine is not back here. We do have though an awesome stereo and it is a Fender stereo and the subwoofer is back here. The Fender stereo is amazing. It's not perfect, but it's very, very close to the Bang & Olufsen Cinema my Audi A3. There's a very confined cockpit in here. It's sort of a dome design, and I've always heard that Volkswagen Beetles were perfect for acoustics, and I take that claim seriously because when I played music in here, let's just say John Mayer or anything of that sort, the bass was driven nicely, the vocals were clear, and those guitar riffs were awesome and you could feel it through the car you don't just hear it you feel it now if you listen to that kind of music that's good for you if you listen to something like oh let's just say you listen to something like imagine dragons you need help with your music selection you shouldn't be judging a stereo system based on terrible music you also notice we have handles here to actually fold down the rear seats and when I mean fold down the receipts, they do fold down and you have a pass-through, which is very cool to have at a convertible. You rarely see that in a lot of vehicles, as le at least as far as convertibles. The looks, you got the two-tone wheels, it's very flash, and I think if you squint, let me close this door, if you squint, you may mistake it for a Porsche. Let me know what you think. I think that the front fascia here and obviously the vent here is very reminiscent of a Porsche. And obviously the shape, this version of the Beetle, the updated version that this is, has a lower roof line, but it still has these great big haunches for the wheel arches, which, uh, you know, you can tell it can be capable of some pretty large wheels, but at the same time, 
this is the lifted version, it does have a Porsche look to it, which I think is why people like it. It's a Beetle, it's a Porsche look, it's just got style. Now, this being the Dune convertible, I have fully automatic climate control, which by the way, when you switch between top up and top down, it remembers the mode it was in last. Very clever, very nice. It just makes, it just brings an air of luxury to this car that you don't quite expect, especially at $31,000. Here you can see the telltale sign of the fender stereo there on the tweeter. You get the logo and you'll see some surrounds here. These surrounds are actually lights, they light up and you can actually control the color of the light using this switch right here. So you'll see there's a dial. You just dial in no color, white, blue, which more, looks more like a purple, and red. And uh, it does add some ambiance to the cabin. I'm sure though, that is quite superfluous and you know, the way Volkswagen works is some features they just don't do for the next model year. Um, they call decontenting and a lot of Volkswagen fans dislike that. Um, so I really don't like going over the options in this car because the next year they're gonna be different. So what I will tell you though is that the features that it does include are quite odd. Like this one for instance, which allows you to adjust the headlight range. So three, two, one. I've seen this in a Nissan Titan XD Cummins diesel truck and I have it here for the headlights. So they basically, can adjust the range, they go further out, they can go dip down. And that's really because we're in a, a higher ride height vehicle, but it also has the optional Xenon headlights. And those headlights actually are self-adjusting and leveling, but at the same time, uh, most cars do that. This one has manual leveling, quite interesting. We also have Park Pilot, which means it has sensors on all of the bumpers and a rear camera. Even though the engine's turbocharged, it's not that quick. When I gave a passenger a ride, she actually asked me if it could go any faster and uh, nope, it can't. So on the drive actually from Dallas to Austin, I was kind of egged on by Fiat owners and Mini Cooper S owners and even a Dodge Challenger. And there's just no way of explaining this other than I couldn't play the game. So while this car may look fast, it definitely isn't. I mean, it has a small turbo and off the line, it may produce a little bit of a launch, but with the front wheel drive that this has, it's not really gonna grip and it's not gonna just lay down its power. So this is not a quick car by any means, but it is fun. Let me show you though, what happens with some of the issues. So right now you just use the uh, keyless entry, you press the start button, car comes to life. Sounds pretty good, ready? I do have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in here, so it uses App Connect, and with my phone plugged in, it reads the phone and it loads Android Auto. So this screen doesn't have glare protection, so so if the sun is directly behind and glares on the screen, it's kind of hard to read, even with polarized shades. However, the good news is I can still see the temperature gauges with my polarized shades. And here we are, we can see our navigation, which is nice to have, although I'm still not a fan of having to have a cable for using Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. But still, the interior is very simple to use, very, very fashionable, fashion forward maybe, trendy. It's, it's ideal, it's ideal. Although I do imagine these sills getting quite hot in the summertime and it would be very uncomfortable to put your arm up here if you just want to cruise. Uh, the Miata has the same problem, but the Fiat Spider doesn't. Now, if I put the top up here using this, you just pull down and behind me, the top raises and it'll automatically latch. And if you hold it down, the windows go up. And when that happens, the AC changes back to the top up setting. Now that's all very convenient, very luxurious, very fun to have. But the one problem is the blind spot. You can hide a Honda Pilot back there. So anything smaller than a Honda Pilot will be very difficult to see 
because there is a little bit of a limited visibility. And what really stuns me here is they've given me interior decorating lighting. They've given me a Fender stereo, which rocks. Um, they've given me mirrors that don't match the body color, but they haven't given me blind spot assist which I think should be standard in this car. So I'm backing out of the parking lot from 12 Bones Barbecue on Congress with the top down and the car in reverse. You see the camera, but it's a little bit washed out when the sun's directly behind us. But even with polarized lenses, I can still see the screen. It's just that it's not, it's not awesome. So there is just a little bit of an issue with that. But beyond that, that's really it for the problems. The rear visibility, on the right corner, the screen during direct sunlight, and obviously the lack of blind spot monitoring. That's, that's it, that's very minor. And I'm sure next year VW will change all that, right? Because they watch and they listen to what I tell them. I'm cruising along on the highway here and it's actually relatively quiet. I'm going highway speeds in Texas. They're completely illegal like that. Um, but you'll notice with a soft top such as this, it's actually still pretty quiet. So I'm actually impressed that I can just cruise right along at this kind of speed and feel no different in this car as I would in a regular coupe, for instance. And actually there's no top buffeting either. Speaking of uh, the top, you'll notice that the back window there is actually glass. It's not plastic. So there is quality that's been built into this vehicle and I'm actually quite astonished because for the price, $30,000 and change, you are getting a lot of style and a lot of substance for that money. Between the quality of the top and the details in the seats and just the simple interior, I think you can't go wrong. They haven't given me auto cruise control or emergency collision braking, which is standard on some of the Volkswagens now. What they have given me though for 2018 on all Volkswagens actually is a six year 72,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty, which is awesome. Actually, when I say give me, I mean give you because this is not my car. This is just a press vehicle that I've had for the week. So I just did a road trip from Austin and I'm averaging 25.1 MPGs. I am now in Dallas. So it's actually Monday morning, pretty early, but I left pretty early. And basically, traffic withstanding, it was a relatively easy drive. And if we look at the stats, it took me about three hours and I averaged 69 miles an hour. So not bad, and it's good to be home. It also runs on 87 octane, but to be honest, it did feel sluggish. That's why I filled it up with premium fuel, much better. So there you go. It's a very fun, very fashionable, trendy, cool, hip, fun convertible. And uh, well, I'm gonna go get some lunch now with Harry and uh, hey, Harry, what's up over here? He loves convertibles. He loves the top down. Who doesn't? So thanks for watching and see you later.